Wow. Hey, hello. How are you? Welcome to the Arshi Thrips. If you're new here, I'm Mary. I am <clears throat> having allergies. <clears throat> I am basically a pretty much a part time um, reseller, thrifter, and picker. I love vintage items. I love pretty things. <laughs> and I love to make money. I like to be happy. I like to buy things and, and buy things that I find and then sell them to people who've been looking for them who might want a blast from the past or a little extra thing in their house or whatever. Welcome to my office. It is part organized and part box. And <laughs> today I'm going to go over my weekend haul. I'm just like in this place where like I'm so excited that I found some of this stuff and I just want to show people. So, um, hi Sherry, how are you? It's so good to see you here. Hello to everybody who's joining and and hello to everybody who's coming back and watching the replay. So let's see, what, what do I start with? Well, let me tell you what's been going on this past weekend. Uh, I live in Florida. It is called the Sunshine State. Very misleading. It is not a sunshiny state during spring, summer, and part of fall. It rains a lot here. But it's also, we get about a week of winter. So I can't really complain. And it's, it's a very beautiful state. It's just very wet. Um, <laughs> So the nice thing about Florida is that we have year-round yard sales and garage sales and estate sales. The bad side about that is that the area of Florida that I'm in does not have a lot of estate sales. You would think it, it would, but it doesn't. So estate sales are a little bit harder to find here. So we pretty much rely on a lot of yard and the garage sales. But when it's raining and thunderstorming, it's really hard to find some that are still going on unless they're hiding in their garage. So we, long story short, we got rained out this weekend. <laughs> there was one estate sale that we drove about 25 minutes to get to uh, that, that did not disappoint, had some gorgeous stuff in there. I, hi guys. Hi, Laura. Hi, Karen. Uh, you know, I should probably, let me just break here and give you guys a little disclaimer. My internet is not the best. I really kind of try to avoid going live because my internet can be choppy and I'm just really sorry. Someday we'll be in a better area with better internet. The, the internet here, that's a whole rant video. <laughs> the internet and the cable here, not good. So I apologize if I'm kind of choppy. I wish I could do something to fix it, but I really can't. Hello, Debbie. So anyway, we found one estate sale. Beautiful stuff inside. Oh my gosh, the furniture. They had furniture with like lion's heads on the arm of the wooden chair. And oh, just gorgeous. But prices to match, which I think this stuff was worth the prices they were asking for. But it was a little bit harder as a reseller to um pay some of the prices they're asking for so we decided to go back on sunday on sunday it rained again so we are uh, we couldn't do any yard sales that day either i was feeling a little discouraged when we discovered a second estate sale so between the two estate sales and both of them being on their last day and wanting to make great deals to get the stuff moved we were able to find some stuff that i really love i'm pretty excited about it i mean Nothing here is going to make me rich, but, but I love everything that we found. and I'm really kind of excited to show it to you. So we spent about $40 and I can make easily a uh, hundred to $200 back. I mean, easily a hundred, probably more like $200 back. So I want to show you guys now what I, <laughs> what I got. I'm just such a dork because I get all giddy about these things and I just want to show people and so I'm glad you guys are here. I'm glad you joined me. So let's get on with it. Okay, first things first is, if you know me, you know I like jewelry. And there really wasn't much jewelry. Either one of these estate sales, they were all kind of like really pretty, but cheaply made, you know, like the metal felt like a tin or an aluminum mix. It just didn't, it just didn't, nothing, nothing stood out except for this cloisonne bracelet. I love it. It's um, it's a bangle bracelet. It's vintage age, but you know, sometimes with these things, you can't, come on, camera focus. Sometimes with these things, you can't tell really if it's 1930s vintage or 1980s remake vintage, 
but it has some wear on the inside. It does have a stamp there, but I keep forgetting to put my granny glasses on to read it. <laughs> so it does, it's got some wear, but it's got this great clasp and please excuse my nails. I just don't even mess with it. <laughs> it's just not, it's got this great clasp. It's missing the little safety chain, but I can replace that pretty easily because I have uh, old bracelets that are broken. I can take the chain off. So Cloisonnet doesn't really make a lot of money by itself, but it sells pretty quickly. So I try, I do try to grab Cloisonnet jewelry when I see it, especially if it's as pretty as this one is. I really liked it. So I'm hoping I can get maybe $15 out of that. Then my husband picked this out. 70s. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking it was the whole like late 70s, early 80s, that cloisonne kind of came right back into style. And that's a lot of times when I pick up things. Um, that's where I pretty much guess that they're from. Uh, the only reason that it kind of gave me pause is how much wear is on it and that safety chain. I don't know if they were doing the safety chain in the 70s. Maybe they were. But um, I, I'm, to be honest, I'm not even going to really pay much attention to exactly how old it is i figure it's vintage no matter what and it's really pretty so it'll sell so my husband found this it just looks like a little point it's a it's a necklace but it opens up into a fan it's so pretty and then it has this let me see if i can get it all the way open yep there we go and then it has this design on it of cranes and water oh it's got a dragon on this side and cranes and water on this side so I just thought that was really my husband picked that out like he's learning <laughs> so we'll get that listed too and then I got these myself I, I have to admit I don't know maybe I'll sell them but if anybody knows what's in this box this little box here. These are called, now I'm probably going to slaughter the word, but boating balls, I think. These little boating balls. And you spin them in your hand like this. It's kind of hard to do on the camera. <laughs> but it's good for like stress and anxiety. It helps me and my ADD brain uh, focusing on stuff. So I did have, I had a pair and I don't know where they went. Somewhere in the move when we left Maryland and came to Florida, they disappeared. So um, I got myself another set. That's that's the one thing that I got that I'm keeping for myself. So um, <clears throat> then these jumped out at me because I love salt and pepper shakers. <laughs> and these little gingerbread men just jumped out. I'm a little boy and a little girl. And uh, they're in great shape, and they didn't want much for them. They're marked on the bottom, art mark, and they have little plastic stoppers. So, and they still have salt and pepper in them. I shouldn't tip them too far. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, they're they're not terribly old, but they're not terribly new either. And when I looked them up, I think it came out to like about sixteen dollars, which is which is pretty in line with what I charge for salt and pepper shakers, but I thought that with the hol holidays coming up, they do need a bath. Every nothing here has been washed, so everything needs a bath because this lady put things on display and then never touched them again. But I figured with the holidays coming up with Thanksgiving and Christmas coming up, those would be really cute. I like them. So I grabbed those. <clears throat> and then I also grabbed these other salt and pepper shakers, which are really dirty, really need a bath. She really didn't touch these but these pretty little flamingos, which I thought are just gorgeous little, they have nothing on the bottom, plastic stoppers. I mean, I'll probably ask about 12 or $14 for them, but they're in great shape other than the 12 layers of dirt that are on them and dust. But other than that, they're in great shape. I, I This lady had the estate sale that we got these at and the other salt and pepper shakers um, she had a lot of things around her that were just really pretty. She loved to show things off, I could tell, because she had all sorts of stuff. And I'll tell you, if I had a lot more money, I would have brought a lot more home because there were so many things there that I was just totally admiring that I really wanted. So let's see, we're going to put that aside because that's my oops I'm going to show you guys at the end here. <laughs> 
So then I also found these. Now I found this one first and he was sitting off by himself over with the salt and pepper shakers. And I have a feeling somebody moved him over there because um, he wasn't around anything else that was any kind of a figurine or anything like that. Uh, it's, it's an Asian, obviously a lucky elephant and gorgeous. He's not marked though. He has this little paper label on the bottom, which doesn't really mean much. I know you guys are probably seeing it backwards, but it's like P P Z E three. It's like, it's just a number for something. And then he's got these little felt feet that I think she just cut out of felt and glued on there. So I may try to take those off, but that also might be a mistake too. So I may just try to sell it like this, but I carried it over. I put it on the table where we were putting all our stuff and oh, dust. And I turned around and saw this one. <laughs> so now I have two of them. They're so cute. They match. This is the same thing. It has, it has that label, but it also has a tiny little spot of what I think was a sticker here and is now gone. So I am deciding that it said made in Japan and not made in China. <laughs> but um, but I'll put those up, probably put these up for, let's see, probably about $20 a piece, maybe a little bit less, maybe a little bit more. So, I mean, if I sell two of these, I've, I've paid for everything that, that we've bought. If I sell these at $20 a piece, then the whole thing's paid for. So let's see, what have I done? What haven't I done? Okay, so this mug, this mug I saw, and you're probably wondering why I got it because it's just basic drip glaze mug, except that it is from the um, uh, Florida Renaissance. I don't know why you're backwards. My camera never records anything backwards until today. So. I don't know, but it's backwards and I apologize for that. But uh, this is a Florida Renaissance Festival from the year 2000. Now I am a Renaissance Festival nut. I am a nerd, I own it. I've been to a lot of these Ren fairs and I, I know what this mug is. Every year that you go and every place that you go, there's a different mug. So I've been to the Texas, Ohio and Maryland festivals. I haven't gone to Florida yet, but um, there's always these drip glazes, usually in blue, sometimes in pink, um, sometimes in like a beige color, and they change them every year. So this style was only for the year 2000, and it, it probably won't go back there. Um, and they do sell out. They'll have they'll order enough to last for the entire time that the Ren Fair is in town, and if they sell out, they sell out. So. People like to grab these because it's just something that they like to collect and grab when they're at the Ren Fair, and you have to get them when you first get there or you might miss out. Now, the thing that really caught my eye about this one is that usually they make those mugs in large quantities. I mean, the Ren Fair is in town for a couple of weeks or a couple of months, so you know they make a ton of them, except this one is numbered on the bottom 45 out of 100. So they only made 100 of these. And that means that most of the people that went to the Florida Ren Fair that year did not get this mug. <laughs> now the very first Ren Fair mug that I ever sold, I bought for something like $2 at Goodwill and I sold it for 50 something dollars, a little over $50. Um, I don't know if this one's gonna command that much because the other one was more like a Stein. And so uh, it was a little fancier. It was from the Texas Renaissance Festival of something like 1987. So this one might not get that much, but I am expecting I could probably get maybe $30 out of it, which is pretty good considering I grabbed it out of the garage and paid like a buck for it. So, um, but it is a little heavy and it's not gonna be able to be shipped FOMO method or anything like that. I can't put it in a box and put it in a, padded envelope so the shipping is going to be a little heavy but I don't think it's going to be crazy heavy I think you know they'll be paying eight or nine dollars for shipping along with the mug but I was really excited to see that and it has absolutely no damage no 
chips or crazing or it's like they bought it and then they stuck it in a cupboard and then they forgot about it. And from the looks of that house, that's probably what she did with most of her stuff. <laughs> um, let's see. So I also grabbed this and to, uh, you know, I kind of was blindly shopping. So this is a uh, Disney, it's marked uh, Walt Disney Attractions. And uh, obviously it's Mickey Mouse and the movie Fantasia and it's a photo frame. And it stands up on the back. It's got a little stand up thing. It's not, and it's not old. I think it has, no. No, it doesn't. It does have an original price tag of $16. And I figured when I looked it up that I would probably charge about 15 to 20. So that's probably right in line with it. And I'll probably price it a little high and then accept offers on it because, um, because it's not anything like when I looked up, I didn't see any solds, but it's just so darn cute. And it would be great in a little kid's room that has a lot of Disney Disney theme to it. Um, or pictures from your Disney trip. I think it would be cute there, too. So let's see. Let's move on. Okay. Now, this is a small oopsie. I actually did two oopsies this weekend. This was one of them. <laughs> so I bought these... Um, milk glass hands and these are things that were made in the 30s and 40s but also came back into into fashion sort of in in the late 70s and 80s um oh good it's not backwards okay oh hi Yvonne. so um uh it's kind of hard for me to say exactly how old they are, but I don't think it really matters. So I grabbed both of them and then I pulled them out for the haul video and noticed this one is broken. So that is going on my sink to hold my rings when I wash dishes. But this one, this one, it's just really cute. It's, you know, hold your earrings or your rings or whatever you want to put in it. And it probably won't make me a whole lot of money. Let's see. According to my notes, I'm thinking probably like 10 bucks. Would have been nicer if I had had the pair, but I'm not going to sell a broken. <laughs> I'm not going to sell something broken. I just, I can't bring myself to do that. So, but that was a dollar, you know, I don't usually like to put something that low in my store even though I have some low things in my store like that I like to look for things that are going to make me uh, at least $15 a little bit higher um, but uh, but I'm happy with $10 for that so now one of the things that if you're in Jocelyn the crazy lamp ladies Facebook group it's called um, <laughs> old things thrifters and pickers you'll know I'm an admin there and about once a week I go live and I kind of talk we have a lot of very new people in there one of the things I was talking about recently was that vintage and collectibles just don't sell really really quickly I don't think it's a spoon rest no no it's too big it's too small for a spoon rest I mean it's you know I mean, look at how it's just too tiny for a spoon rest. So, um, um, so I've been telling them that, that vintage collectibles, things like tchotchkes and, and figurines, they don't really sell as fast as some things that people need. So I've been advising them while they're out looking for their pretty little collectibles to also look for things that people need more than want that they're going to uh, that's going to sell a little more quickly. And I'm actually not very good at that because I just, this stuff sparkles and it gets me and I see it and I'm just like, must have pretty thing, must sell pretty thing. So I have to really work hard at finding things that aren't like pretty little collectibles. So we're walking through and, and I saw this and I've never seen this before. It's called a Biosonic Tooth Wand and it's a toothbrush that lights up and it has two brush speeds to brush your teeth and massage your gums. And it also, <clears throat> excuse me, times itself and turns itself off after you've been brushing your teeth for long enough. And um, I think that they were originally sold at HSN. I really can't find much about it, except that it's worth about 20 or $25. So I'm going to put that up there. And hopefully somebody that just is really particular about cleaning their teeth or that has, you know, dental issues that needs to really make sure they get a really good clean or something like that, or just likes a toothbrush that lights up and times you, 
Hopefully somebody will buy that. So I'm going to throw that up in the midst of all of my pretty little figurines and salt and pepper shakers and um, test my own theory on putting things that people need in there. Um, let's see. So what else do we have? So this is one thing that I got that actually is not vintage. Oh, I almost dropped it. It's actually not vintage. It's newer. And um, it's by a company called Creative Co-op. And it's a coaster set with this little cast iron bird on top. And the coasters are really pretty. Um, they have little birds on them, Paisley Designs. And, and my husband actually picked this. And he said, and I agreed with him, it's, it's not old, but it's really pretty. And he thought that it would fit well in the store. So I'm going to go ahead and list this for, let's see, where's my list? Uh, probably about $20 I'm going to list this for. It doesn't have, it has the original tag on it, but it doesn't have an original price. So I have no idea what she paid for it. The lady whose house this was at, it looks like she may have relocated in her more elderly years and sold most of her original stuff and only kept a few things like those little milk glass hands and then uh, redecorated with new things that looked old like this. She had teacups all over her walls, just, just teacups. There were teacups everywhere. And Mary Engelbert, Engelbright, I can't, I'm probably butchering her name, everywhere. And um, this was one of the things that she had that just has that kind of vintage look to it, but, but was new. It was kind of a challenge to find things in her house because... As I said, I, I like to stick with the vintage stuff and her stuff was all much more modern. So what haven't I showed? Let's see, this, um, okay, this. So this bowl stood out to me because it's amber and I like the frosting around the top. And um, I personally love amber glass. Amber is one of the slower selling colors. Um, the, the, Better selling colors are like blue and green. And I hear red sells well, but I don't know, man. My red vase is still sitting in my store. So I don't know if I believe that. My Everything blue and green that I, that I list that's glass sells pretty quickly. But a red and amber, they just psh, take a while to sell. But I couldn't pass this up. And when I first picked it up, I could see a um, shadow of a label there. I thought it was ripped off, but no, it's actually on the inside. And the inside of this is dirty and it has candle wax in there, but the Fenton label is down there on in, in the inside of it. And somehow I have to figure out how to clean that without getting that label wet. So this is might be a um, toothbrush cleaning, but it definitely needs to be cleaned. But I don't, uh, because it's amber, I'm not really going to be able to get as much as I would be able to get if this were blue or green. So I think I was thinking around 20 bucks for this one too. Yeah, $20 for this one. It's just really pretty. Absolutely no damage. So um, I did grab this. Yeah, Anthropology or Pottery Barn, something like that. It, that's what I figured, or maybe Pier 1 or something like that that came from. And usually I try to avoid that stuff. But uh, I just really love those and I just really wanted to, I just really wanted to have it. So, <laughs> so this next thing I got because I, I'm getting to be very good friends with Jocelyn, who is the crazy lamp lady and uh, the rest of the admin team and her boyfriend and the rest of the admin team. I just love them to death. And we're such a great team. We all get along so well. And if you watch her, you know that she kind of makes light of the fact that the angels little angel figurines are usually in these seductive weird seductive poses <clears throat> and so it's become a joke in the group that when we see things in these poses we post it and we kind of laugh about it well i found a seductive frog and i'm actually going to keep him and he's going to go in my um in my garden well maybe not in my garden because things in my garden tend to get broken but but he will go outside just as a reminder of good friends. Good friends are always good. So I got him. I was really excited to find him actually. Now, then my husband did a little bit of 
shopping with me and he was able to pick out things that I would have never looked at, never looked at. And that's what these three things down here are. Oh, and I got stuff over there too. So this is a um, Chad Pennington, New York Jets bobblehead. And uh, I, you know, you know, I'm not really into sports. I don't dislike them, but I'm not really into them. But baseball is more my speed. And I am an Orioles fan. And I have, um, I have tried to sell Cal Ripken Orioles stuff before and it just doesn't sell. And I guess maybe people are just over Cal Ripken. I don't know. So I usually don't even look at this stuff, but uh, it will sell. I've looked it up and it's like a 19 or $20 bobblehead. So I think that should do okay. It was in the garage with, with the junk. Um, it's still in the package. It's never opened. So hopefully the Jets have a good season this coming season. And maybe I can make a little more off of them. But the other two things that my husband pointed out that I just never would have looked at. Creative Co-op makes great pieces that sell well. Oh, good. That's good to know. Um, the other thing that my husband. Okay. So we're in that we're in that one estate sale. We're in that one estate sale where um, they just had that fantastic furniture and the super high prices. And in this, there was this humongous arm, armoire that, oh, I would have bought if I had an extra $500 and a vehicle big enough to tote that beauty home. <laughs> I was making jokes that we don't need a bed. Let's just buy that and throw the bed away and put it where the bed is. <laughs> um but inside they had a whole bunch of stuff and this was all down on the lowest shelf. Now I have back problems and knee problems that I've had. Um, the back problems and knee problems came before the weight came. I'm just saying that. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, I don't usually go on the lower shelf, but my husband got right down there and he said, Hey, there's slipknot stuff down here. And I said, what's the slipknot? <laughs> so he found this, <laughs> Slipknot lunchbox. Um, it's really dirty. Needs, needs a good bath. But I looked it up and it's like a $25 or $30 lunchbox that we got for like four bucks. There's my dog. Hello, dog. Please stop. You're being noisy. Thank you. <laughs> so he picked this up and I was like, okay, yeah, we'll get it. And then he said, but wait, there's more. <laughs> so oh, there you go, Sherry. He said, hi, pants. <laughs> So then we have, hold on, let me bend over to get it. So then you can probably guess what's in this box. It's, <laughs> I would have never looked at these. Slipknot sneakers. And they just, they do need to be cleaned. They do have some wear. You can even see some of the wear here. Um, it's a really strange wear pattern, but I think with some cleaning and conditioning or maybe a little bit of oil, I can kind of clean that rubber up. They're in great shape. They, you know, when I bend them, nothing separates. Shoes like this, canvas shoes like this, like chucks and stuff, they have a tendency to break apart right here over time. And when you bend them, you'll see that the fabric pushes in and the rubber pushes out. And, um, and uh, so that um, I was checking for that, and that's great. There's almost nowhere to the tread at all. There's some little pebbles stuck in there. I'll clean all that out. Nowhere to the tread at all. There is a little bit of wear on the outside, nowhere on the inside, and there is somewhere on the back. You can see the slip knot thing right here is worn. So I'll just disclose all of that. But all in all, it's it's just. My dog. Um, they're, in, they're in really great shape. Oh, you think they were worn? Oh, you think they were worn by a skateboarder? I didn't think of that. But I can clean them up pretty well. And they have the box. Now, I don't know if I'm going to sell them with the box because that will make shipping a lot bigger. Um, but uh, but it says they're size 8. Slipknot mask high tops. And the original price is... $48.99. So I'm thinking that with the wear, because of the wear, I might only get about 35 or 40 for them. <laughs> she gets, uh, 
she gets dry skin so she itches you know and it makes her collar jingle 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 <laughs> but she's my lovey so come here pippy so let's see i have just a couple more things here's my girl um so this i grabbed kind of as a joke i saw it as we were getting ready to leave hello welcome welcome and it was in the house of the lady who liked all of the mary inglebright inglebert inglebright stuff and it was in a cabinet that I actually hadn't seen until we were walking up to get in line to pay for everything. And I saw what it said on the front and I grabbed it and giggled as a joke to my husband. But somehow I ended up actually purchasing it. <laughs> it is a huge mug and it says the queen of everything because that suits, doesn't it? Yes, it does. <laughs> so, um, he, of course, he was hemming and hawing. You don't need another mug. And he's right. I don't need another mug. But it sure was fun to get it and watch his, his reaction to it, you know. And um, I'll just sell this for, let's see, probably about $15. I'll put this up for. And uh, it needs a good cleaning. It's kind, of, it's kind of dirty on the inside. I don't even want to show you what it looks like on the inside. It looks like somebody forgot to wash it after they drank tea. But but I'll clean it out and get it nice and white in there and put that up for $15. I thought that was super fun. She had all kinds of, she had canisters and all kinds of things, but that's just really not my not my speed. So I kind I just left those there. I don't really know how well that stuff sells anymore. So um yeah. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like 15, 20 bucks somewhere around there. I'd sell it for. I think it's a pretty good. I like it. It's a joke that's going to make me money. So I'm good with that. So let's see. The last thing before I show you my big oopsie moment <laughs> is this cute little trinket box. Is that adorable or is that adorable? Our dog is a mix between a Jack Russell Terrier and a Beagle. She is all hunting dog. She has a nose that can smell miles away. And <laughs> She's she's our special little snowflake. Um, but right when I saw this, I I really had to have this. And I don't even know if I'm going to part with it or not. It's a little bit newer. It says 2002 on the bottom. CCI 2002. It's got this cute little bone on the inside. But um, I figure, you know, either I'm going to keep it or it's just going to sit next to my desk while it's listed. And I'm going to enjoy it and I pass it on to somebody else. But... Because we have a Jack Russell, even though our dog is black, she's she got the black from her beagle side. Um, I just I just really fell in love with that. So uh, let me tell you my mistake. Oh my gosh, you guys are gonna that's his mail to Sherry on it. <laughs> Be careful now. I know how this thing works between us. Yeah, I have this dry. I have to show you guys this. So Sherry is my friend. She's in the chat and. We we just have this <laughs> we just have this great friendship because like <laughs> she said she was showing me something asking me about selling it. I said, Oh my gosh, I love that, but don't send it to me. And she sent it to me anyway. <laughs> because she knows that I really would really love this. It's a little student project piece, but she knows I love dragons. And um I'm actually going to repaint it because I, I don't like this screen. I, I want him to look a little more fierce. But um, that was a gift from my friend Sherry, who likes to spoil me sometimes. So you never know, Sherry. You might say that, and it might end up on your porch. <laughs> so um, let me tell you my mistake. <laughs> and you guys have to laugh about it, because it really is funny. Um, I'm very big on, uh, first of all, I think it's I think it's well known. Even if I don't say it, I would imagine you guys can tell that I have ADD. That my brain kind of goes all over the place and um sometimes i tend to hyper focus because of that and i get a thought in my head and i'm just like stuck on that thought and i don't you know easily i have to really catch myself because i can just be stuck on that thought and end up doing something like i did this weekend <laughs> um so we're we're going through we're going through the garage where all of the you know stuff that they think is junk is and I found this little bird figurine 
And I pulled it out and I'm like, this figurine is so freaking adorable. It probably won't sell for much. It's Lennox. I looked at the bottom and it says Lennox. And uh, she had a lot of Lennox stuff in her house. She collected a lot of Lennox. And I there was a lot of really pretty stuff that I probably would have bought if Lennox was still a really good seller, but it's kind of on the decline a little bit. But I just thought this little bird was so adorable and he's sitting on acorns and a little bit of holly. And so it's a nice little touch for Christmas time where you can leave them out all year long. And I figured he must be part of some kind of a set or series that they did of birds. So I, I brought him home. I bought him and I brought him home. And I get into Jocelyn's group and I ask people, do you think this is a goldfinch or what do you think this is? And people are saying, no, I think it's a chickadee. Um, so <laughs> I had already tried Googling all these bird figurines and, uh, and Lennox bird figurines and I just could not find them, could not find them. And then my husband comes up to me when I said, I just can't find this, this figurine. He said, well, where's the other one? And I said, what other one? And he said, the one that goes with that. I said, what are you talking about? It didn't have anything that goes with that. It's just a figurine. It was by itself. He said, no, it's a salt shaker. <laughs> I had looked at the bottom of this several times, but because my initial reaction to it was that it was a figurine that was not registering in my brain that it was a salt shaker, nor were the two holes on the top. <laughs> so, so it's a salt shaker. I bought a salt shaker and now I understand why the lady was looking at me funny when I was saying that I wanted to buy this. She was probably like, why are you buying a salt shaker? <laughs> So we went back and looked for the pepper shaker and it's not there. I imagine that it broke years ago and the owner just stuck this out in the garage because she couldn't bear to throw it away because she collected. So, <laughs> so I bought myself a salt shaker um, and then I couldn't find it because I was looking up figurine. Uh, but once I realized it was a salt shaker, then my friends were able to point me in the right direction of of what it actually is and it's a chickadee salt shaker that had a match for the pepper <laughs> so i think what i'm going to do is actually i'm going to just go ahead and list it on ebay as a single salt shaker because it can sit on your shelf as a figurine i mean it really doesn't look like a salt shaker you don't know unless you turn it over and even the holes are kind of hard to see because it's black and um so i'm going to go ahead and list it just, you know, it'll probably be a 10 or $12 salt shaker. And then I also have Facebook groups that I'm in that uh, people that collect salt shakers and or salt and pepper shakers. And a lot of people collect just one of them. So maybe somebody will want this like just to put in their collection or if they like birds or maybe if they have pepper and they need salt. So... <laughs> So that's my, that was my faux pas was I just wasn't paying attention. And sometimes I get a little caught up in the excitement of, um, of the chaos of shiny things that is surrounding me and just didn't pay enough attention to it while I decided to buy it. So always double check, make sure you know what you're looking at. That's my message for today. That was my mess. Actually, between that and this one, I guess I kind of messed up twice, didn't I? Because that was definitely broken when I bought it because there was no um, piece to that in the car, in the box that it was in. So I'm okay with that. Just a little mistake. <laughs> so anyway, that is it. That's my haul. That's everything that I got. I have some things that are, you know what? I could ask you guys. This is from actually the weekend before, and it's something that my husband picked up. And obviously it hangs up here and it has this little teapot and you can open the top. I think it's for incense. So if you know what this is for, comment for me, please, and help me figure it out. I'm torn on whether I'm going to clean it up, make it shiny or just sell it looking like this, this rustic, old, weathered, brass look. Um, so if you guys know what this is, let me know. I'm pretty sure that it is 
that it's for incense. Because that would make sense. You would light it in there, put the top on it, and the smoke will come out here. So other than that, and that's it. That's really all I got. I just really wanted to share that haul with a bunch of people that get my excitement. <laughs> because I do get excited. I, I get a little um I get a little nerdy over these things. So uh, that's it, guys. So thank you very much. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up. Please subscribe. The long red bar. This is subscribe. And there's a bell next to it that you can click so that every time that I go live or I um, upload a video, YouTube will let you know. Debbie thinks it's a sake warmer? Hmm. Quite possibly. I'm going to look into that. So thank you, thank you guys. Thanks for all the thumbs up. Please feel free to invite people to my channel, share this video, do whatever you want to. I'm good with it. I just like to share this with people. So thank you guys. Have a wonderful day. Mwah. Bye.